In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to add or create users in our Active Directory for our domain. So what I'll need to do is click on Start. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Administrative Tools, and we're going to choose Active Directory Users and Computers. Now after it comes up, we're going to go ahead and expand our domain. And you're going to see a couple of different things. I'm going to point some out for you. One of them is the computers. This is called an organizational unit. The computers organizational unit currently has nothing in it. But as we add client computers or workstations to my domain, you're going to start seeing this populate with all the computers that are part of my domain. I'm going to also click on the domain controllers, which is going to list any domain controllers that we have in our domain. And you can see I've currently got the only one I've got set up at the moment. We're going to also focus here on the users organizational unit. And you can see there's only one real user that's being used, the administrator of our account. The other ones here are groups with the exception of guest, which guest is currently deactivated. And so this is not currently live or enabled. So what we're going to need to do to start with is I want to create another account just as a backup to be an administrator. So what I want to do is right click on the administrative account and I'm going to go ahead and choose copy. And we're going to go ahead and give our first user a name. And you can use any naming scheme you want. I'm just going to call them user. And the login name is kind of what's the most important here. I'm going to call this first login name is just user1. Let's go ahead and put first name as user1 as well. And that's going to be my login name for this first user. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And I'm going to need to type in a password. Again, this password is going to have to have the same complexity requirements that the password had when we had to set the administrative account. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a password that's going to have at least a capital letter, a symbol, a lowercase letter, or a number, three of those four things, and at least eight characters long. And we have the option now to also make it so that the first time this user logs in, they have to change their password. I can make it so that the password never expires, or they cannot change a password, or the account is disabled by default. I'm going to go ahead and leave all of those unchecked for now. Just go ahead and hit next and finish. And I want to show you what happens when we copy the user. If I double click on the administrator of account, or you can right click and choose properties, I want you to notice what gives the administrator of account all of its power is basically the groups that it belongs to. These groups here are security groups that are set up that give permissions for the administrative account. And you can see there's several different groups here that are created. If I take a look at my copied user, which is user1, and I double click on this user, you're going to notice if you go to the member of, he's a member of the same groups as the administrative account, which makes him or gives this user all the power that he has as the administrative account. And so that is how to set up a user, or at least to copy a user. I also want to show you how to create a brand new user from scratch. You can use the little icon up here, or you can just right click and choose new user. This is going to go ahead and create for us. I'm going to go ahead and type in user2. And I'm going to use the login name user2. We're going to go ahead and hit next. I'm going to go ahead and type in the password for the user2. And again, we can choose whether or not the user has to change the password at the next login or not. I'm going to uncheck that for now. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and finish. The big difference between this user is if I double click this user and go to their member of, you're going to see that they're only a member of domain users group, meaning that this user belongs to the domain, and those are the only permissions he'd have with domain users. And so this is no, nowhere near as powerful of a user as the copied administrative account. And so this is typically what you're going to use to create new users for your account. If you do need an administrative user, you could definitely right click and copy on the administrator and give the person full administrative rights. And you can mess around with the different groups and determine which rights or privileges they should have. So this is creating users within the Active Directory on our domain controller.